Right. Okay, sorry for that disruption. Um, we were just on the fact of, of going over why it's a good idea to report the pursuit, the energy uh, performance contract. And I think that we had one other question that the superintendent wanted to ask there. So I wanted to ask uh, John and for the community, like, why is this a good time to do this? Sure. So, I mean, as part of the 2019 and then the 2021 follow up bond referendum, we replaced and improved the ventilation throughout the entire district. All of the classrooms and the offices, as well as the large instructional spaces, we received air conditioning, but more importantly, they, they received improved mechanical pressure ventilation. All of those mechanics are now on a central building management system so we can control it remotely. There are other steam components and convectors and cabinet heaters that weren't upgraded as part of that overall plan. That once we add those as well, we'll have full building management control for the two elementary schools. Currently, the high school is 100% on the building management system. So we would now pull up any other mechanical piece of equipment at frame and center will now get up onto the system on the building management system. And then energy-wise, in terms of HVAC, will be 100% set on the building management system. I can tell the community that uh, we did a little bit of research and uh, the lore of the bell uh, has come to light and we, uh, we believe we found the original bell and we like to, since we're redoing the cupola, we thought it would be a good idea to store a little bit of history and bring it back into the community and discuss it with more depth. And maybe just get some quick updates on, on that, John. Sure, those plans and specs were submitted to the State Education Department uh, about three weeks ago, the first week in October. Um, right now, they're running about 14 weeks, so I assume end of January, something like that, we'll have SED approval, at which time we'll go out to bid. We'll award it probably the February or the March board meeting, and then the work will take place in the summer of 2024 with the completion date of the last week in August. Um, complete renovation of the cupola in its entirety, new windows, um, all, of the, all of the wood will be replaced with fiberglass, painted the same color. The copper cap is going to stay. Obviously, we're not going to even go, go near that and cut that. But everything else inside, um, including some pigeon restoration, will take place. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll, we'll take and the restoration of the bell, John, that the Yep, yep, 100%. With new housing to hold the thing up, because right now it's pretty wide, the one up there. And lighting? And light, yep. Sound? Uh, we get the speakers, yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be Okay. Can we do before and after photos? Of course. Oh, yeah. I got a billion before, but we'll get a couple other good ones. Yeah. You want them with the pigeons or with that? <laughs> I have them both. James and I were attacked. <laughs> Are there ways to um, prevent that from Yeah, make sure the windows don't get broken. <laughs> I mean, there were just two missing pieces of panes of glass, and they found shelter in there, and wow. it's oh, Yeah. So we will make sure that thing gets taken place. Any other questions about the cupola restoration? Mm -hmm. So special thank you to the members of the historical society and members of the community who helped us uh, restore uh, the original bell. So we're all be excited to walk out and have some. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's moving along now. Um, review of minutes of the regular board of education meeting, November seventh. Anybody have any questions on those minutes at all? Okay. Now we move on to old business, which uh, gets actually started. And I'd like to continue with that. But some of our items that we're going to discuss this evening. Northcam training. Okay. I can talk a little bit um, <clears throat> about Marcan training. Obviously, you know, um, the Global State the Gregory, you know, over 
Overdose deaths today are leading to cause of injury related in the United States. The majority of COVID deaths, overdose deaths involve opioids. Deaths involving synthetic opioids largely elicit made of fentanyl and stimulants have increased in recent years. In addition, overdose deaths accelerated during the COVID-19 pandemic. East Rockaway School District operates as an opioid overdose prevention program. We need members of our community to be trained after uh, the Narcan training in case other overdose. We'll be hosting a free uh, uh, Narcan training, uh, and, and the information will be out, and I believe is already put out by Mr. Gregory, uh, at Julian Senior High School on Tuesday, November 28th at 3.30 p.m. Uh, to approximately 4.30, so that workshop will last about an hour. And there is also uh, a, a form, a Google form, that you can sign up for. So, um, you know, this is an unfortunate thing that happened in the community, but, you know, my feeling is if there's a chance to save someone's life and have them restart, uh, it's a good idea to get this training. So, you know, a discussion. We've had this in the past, and uh, it's always proven great for the community because so many people benefit from this. Anything, anytime we can educate the community about the events that are going on, um, especially in the with the can and you know being sold in CBS is it's a publicly known that can. So we really you know we promote it as best we can hope we get a great time. You know, I think it's great and it's great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah and even the uh, our senior health uh, classes, you know, I know we've done that after we encourage those students to participate in that night. Okay. Yep. Yep. Move right along. So we had a. Uh, we've talked this past year um, as when the field was being built in the back, just to bring everything up to speed. We knew that we had very little problems back there, and we wanted to use it for the best interest of everybody. And that was being said that we could put kids first. And kids first meant that every inch of the place we needed to use and maximize for all of our seats. So baseball and softball, okay, uh, seating areas were a question right from day one. And it was always the board that felt that it's the students who should benefit by the field. So there were no other ways to configure the fields other than the way we have it right now to maximize use, uh, to provide dugouts that were really appropriate for the players at this point in time. And that led to a disadvantage of spectator seats. Um, it was felt when plans went through and we spoke about it, that we did the best we possibly can. We wanted to make sure that the kids got the best they can and that the bleachers would be used for more spectators. Um, we came across some parents last year that wanted to get better access to games. So we made it like a, a, an area where they could bring their own chair. And um, at that point, not a chair, excuse me, because that was uh, problem, problematic. But we right, they could stand in an area, and we called it standing room only, just to bring that memory back. Thank you for that. And we had a standing room only, and it seemed to work okay. So if people want to go down, I'll be staying in the stands. Um, baseball is a very difficult place that you can get standing room only because of the way, again, the dugouts are configured at that point in time to see it that. And the only place we can possibly be behind the plate. And we can't, it's become problematic to put spectators behind the plate, especially when the opposing teams, okay, and their pitches are out there. Um, so we, we have a, you know, nobody behind the plate. You know, players also do that a lot of the time. So we, we beat this up. I know that uh, people have asked again, and I don't know where else we can go with that. I don't know. We had said, when we spoke about this last spring, we had said something about maybe creating some kind of little area almost like a bleacher type thing you didn't even, I, 
we, we did discuss that and I think we want to be uh, in the idea of putting a, a Stanley or sitting box in. And I think it worked pretty well for baseball, and I think there were a few more issues with sort you know, in terms of the division to the people, um, you know, I need to say some non compliant issues where you know, people were going into areas where they shouldn't be. So that, that became a bit of an issue, you know, with softball. So I don't know, you know what direction you can go with to try to continue that. Or, you know, I can afford to do this or something that we have to do. Oh, that we can afford to do this or we want to do this or we want to I think there are a number of options. Yeah, yeah. Because you forge it, and it's actually going to be able to do something. The one thing I think that we just saw is that we're going to use the video camera so that it will be on the screen, too, for those sitting in the stands. At that point in time, we were just getting the video club together. Um, Do you make any advancement with that? I mean, make that as a preparation. For this spring, so that that camera would be able to have better access for the people in the bleachers to see, you know, they have a son or daughter, and they're playing the game up on the on the screen. Yeah, video on the scoreboard. Yeah, video on the video scoreboard. That was one of the things we had discussed. We know we have the capabilities of the Sport Force last year, um, so maybe that needs to be well thought out before the season. So again. So that people are not missing out on things, I think that's just a good problem. I think they're not close enough to see everything. So it might be another thing. My other thing I keep thinking about is that you know, I always want to do the athletic director. And he may come up with some ideas too in the meantime between last year and this year. So I'm glad that we're bringing this to the forefront now because we're you know, just uh, really approaching on the winter. But it gives you time for the athletic director, the coaches, all to pow out. And if they have any ideas they want to share and you know, come up with that are, of course, reasonable, then why not? You know? I don't think any board member in particular is against any parent from being closer to their children. It's a matter, though, of safety. It's the number one cause that we're going to talk about. Is it possible for, um, for us to take the book about areas on the what we're working with. It just gives us a better perspective um, of trying to maybe give some input and talking about space that I know what it looks like from you know, far away, but standing in that area, I thought it would help. Maybe I thought it would make the time that I think we're going to have some use of them. Sure, you want to do it, right? So um, the baseball area, there's, there wasn't standing on last year at all. There was no for that. They, 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 they tried the baseball. Okay. And it's, it's a very difficult angle. Because so it's you have, behind completely. And you have first base over there, yeah. and it becomes a real hazard. Yeah. You, know, you have to yeah. overthrow balls over yeah. there, really, the hazard to put people out there. But again, yeah. 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 And how did the standing room work this the You said towards the end there was issues. Softball, there were some issues. Um, so that, for whatever reason, the baseball seemed to be okay. The, the, the first base side seemed to be a little bit more than the case for one that was the school. Okay. But I think that worked out a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're on the other side of the field, they were wandering into the tent, you know, into the Netted areas okay. and areas that were somewhat dangerous, okay. and then yeah, and then you know they are on the track and field equipment, you know, so you know it has to be able to walk into the parents and from now supervising yeah, and it, it just seemed that it was uh, a little less efficient than the softball area. So okay. I could set something up with the athletic director and you guys and myself we can walk the field and okay. bring some okay. ideas if that works. Okay, thank you. Okay. Leslie, we've been, uh, we've approached this uh, past September, a group of parents have come up about soccer and starting a 7th and 8th grade soccer team. And we have uh, made a proposal that uh, we have an issue of soccer this year, looking to expand and see what kind of program could be there for the future. So just wondering about, is there any follow-up um, 
is done and have it done. Yes. Okay, so I have a report for Mr. Gregory. So we had two coaches, um, Mr. Valentino and Mr. Weber, they coach the work in it. Uh, the training sessions were held at Lane Avenue. Uh, in the last week of the season, which concluded on the uh, 3rd, which was last week, the program trained on the high school prep, so they had just a little adjustment over there. They averaged between six to eight boys per session. So, um, you know, not enough to field a soccer team, or you know, enough to have some interest. Um, later in the month, um, Mr. Gregory plans to follow up with a survey of interest, and we can pursue it the same way if there's an interest. And there's enough kids to, you know, the same great team, we'll consider it. Um, if not, uh, you know, and it's all based on the numbers, so I don't want to promise anybody anything. If we don't have the numbers, we don't have the numbers. But we've got a number of different solutions. Um, so, uh, again, this will be based on the kids who sponsor and what they want. And this is middle school boys? Yes, this is boys soccer for junior high. And that would be, so they're betting to see what six graders are? Yes, yeah, so the survey will go to the sixth grade, the seventh grade, and eighth grade are already participating in each of you all. So we'll put up, 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 I guess we call them rising sixth grades for next year. Okay. The survey will go out, and then the numbers really will determine, you know, more results. Do you have any more questions? Sure. Because I'm not for um, soccer. How many um, soccer players? Well, do you need 11 to play? Okay. Um, and you really need that. If 18 is tight, you're really looking for 20, 20 or so because of injuries, subs, you know, rest and stuff like that to be able to feel competitive. Okay, so that so you would need 20, 70, 20, 30 years. And how many middle school boys were on football football? We'll have that healthy number then. We'll have like 35. Okay. Thank you. Will we be able to uh, speak to Melbourne to see if we're able to do a joint team as we did the older grades? Melbourne did it. Melbourne, Melbourne did it more uh, accommodation team because they had a release player. Okay. So, so, they like, yeah, so they had uh, a lot of interest. From my understanding, they had a lot of interest in Melbourne. So it wasn't. Like for example, across they had low numbers, we had lower numbers, we were able to combine. So you can't combine with that. We can't combine with that. We can't combine because they're not, they didn't want to, you know, okay. respectfully so they want to keep their own oh, players because they have enough kids. What about the players that don't get on to Melbourne? Can we bring them on to us to come on to the team? I spoke with one of the players and I think they said that they were going to be continuing to look at. But, um, yeah, we can look at that. I mean, if our, if our numbers come back low well, and right. it's a decent amount of students that are looking to do the program, um, and if we have some spots open, maybe we can take some of the Malvo players since we do do a lot of sports with them. It would be another way just to interact with the community. And when is that survey going to happen? Oh, I don't know. Sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a date. I know it will be done in the PE classes, um, and the survey will be the survey links will be sent out. So okay. I'll get a date for you. Thank I, I don't have a date. Okay. So we facilitated the youth from the community, which I think was good, and now we'll see. We'll see, yeah, we'll see what the interest is. See what. Yep, we have a few different options, and hopefully it's all of ourselves. Yep. Yeah. I do like that. That's what we're talking about. Reverse it. Reverse it. We're we have too many on there, so I'm going to get this. And then this way, usually we usually find a to them because we don't have enough, so. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's all we have there. Uh, unless there's any other items that you can bring that inside the seat. And then I'm going to look for the artist meeting at uh, 6 46. It looks like motion. Yeah. And it's always Mr. Dowdy with our first motion. Second. Second. By Ms. Lottie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you.